Hello, everybody. We have a really exciting roundtable today. You all know Christy from Truth Seeking with Christy, our friend. And we've got two new friends here on the panel. And one of my favorite things about this whole community and everything that's happening in this timeline that we're in is that where we go one we go all we're all in this together and we're all we all have our voices now so i'm super excited to introduce you guys to two new channels and beautiful beautiful ladies that are not new to this community but just how now have put their channels up so we got stephanie and jennifer so stephanie go ahead and tell us about your channel first and then we'll move to jennifer okay hi everyone i'm stephanie um i have a channel called uh spiritual perspectives of our great awakening and um, pretty much I just go into kind of like my story on how I awakened um, to kind of help guide others that are starting to awaken right now. And I also kind of um, debunk a lot of Bible stuff as well. Reading the Bible now with like a 2020 vision. Mm -hmm. And um, yesterday I actually put a video up about UFOs that I read in the Bible in several, several different places. So stuff like that. And just kind of how I got out of that, I call it church matrix. <laughs> and Bryce, I can thank you for that because you were a big inspiration on that. I was oh, thank you. heavily, heavily indoctrinated by the church, but it's weird because like in the back of my head, I always did question things, but I was too afraid to question it out loud. So, um, you know, reading the missing books, I've been buying them little by little, but I think of a lot of the topics I probably will be going through are actual out of the real, like the Bible we have now, the canonized Bible, and kind of like just reading it with different set of eyes, like the book of Revelation, for instance. Um, I knew at the beginning of the, uh, my husband calls it the Budweiser flu, so I'll stick with that name. That's perfect. I love that, the Budweiser flu. Because <laughs> um, guys, so while they're watching, we're going to try to keep this video up on YouTube. If I have to mute words, I will mute words, but I love that, the Budweiser flu. I love that. Awesome. And he's asleep and he came up with that. So, um, you know, at the beginning of the, of, of that, uh, flu, um, I just got a download of information spiritually. Cause I, I have realized throughout this whole journey, I do have, um, I don't know if you want to call it psychic or prophetic abilities. I've been able to have visions and dreams and such since I was a teenager about these times starting when I was 15 was my first dream. I went into one of those dreams in a previous video, but um, I go through a lot of different things, but a lot of it is like how I was indoctrinated um, by the church and pretty much like learning how to question everything and reading the Bible with a new set of eyes and kind of, you know, depicting what is real and what is not and stuff like that. So that's a lot of what I will be going through with my channel. Amazing. Amazing. All right, Jennifer. You're a Georgia girl, too? Oh, yeah. Born and raised in Augusta, Georgia, home of the Masters. So excited. You're close to the Guidestones in Augusta, aren't you? And, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and be vulnerable and give everybody a good laugh. I always heard of the Georgia Guidestones, but I didn't realize they were in, like, the state Georgia. I thought they were, like, way over there. And I yeah, so, yeah, they're here. Um, I kind of want to go see them. I've been and, there a couple uh, times. Yeah, I want to go check them out. That would I've be been nice. once. I've been once. They're creepy, aren't they? We've been a couple of times. You, the They're whole thing is just like a weird vibe. It's like yeah, a, I bet. it's, it's literally in the middle of eating. nowhere. Like I have when you read the words. <laughs> yeah, like it's in a pasture. Like there's nothing. And let me tell you guys who are not from the deep south, it's hot as hell down here. It's like walking through a bowl of hot soup. So when yeah. you are standing in that pasture with cows looking at these freaking <laughs> you literally feel like you're in the pits of hell. I mean, yeah. Yeah. summer's here biggest... just put me in a bad mood sometimes because it is it is just too. Oh, my, me too. My grandmother, my dad's mother, um, she is from South Georgia, a little town called Quitman. It's right on the Florida uh, kind of Florida, Georgia border, kind of closer to Alabama. Her father, my great grandfather, was she's my only uh, relative who's actually from Georgia. Uh, her her father was a dairy farmer down there, and so 
But my grandmother, you know, she, according to them, they came up through New Orleans. Um, so they already were a little witchy coming up through New Orleans. But my grandmother, she she was really, in, she's my only grandparent that's still alive. She has Alzheimer's now. So she, you know, she's having fun. She's in a home and it's like be at college again. She's having a blast. But, um, but her whole life, she was a therapist, but she was really into like meditation. You know, I think I got a little bit of, of my love of going to India and studying yoga from her, um, even though she had a different childhood. But she would like hide books on reincarnation under the bed for my grandfather. But she, 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 she tried to teach me to meditate when I was like eight. And a few years ago, I asked her, I was like, Grandma, how did you learn to meditate growing up and being born in the 1930s, growing up in a, on a dairy farm in South freaking Georgia? And my grandmother looked at me. She's like, well, it was just too damn hot to do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> All you could do was sit and just meditate. It was too damn hot to do anything else. So. It's my favorite place on earth is uh, Hilton Head, South Carolina. And uh, that was our goal is to move to South Carolina. But I, I don't think she can take it. The she, uh, the Hilton Head's muggy. My mom was in Hilton for a while. Yeah, Mel, but that's right by Savannah. Hilton Head Listen, and Savannah. I can like walk from here to the kitchen, and I'm just I can be pure pouring in sweat. Oh yeah, it's it's um you have to have like uh, Liz and I were talking about that about the possible like darkness coming. I don't even know if we can say the actual day number, which we were talking about, Christy mm -hmm. and I. And a lot of people have like said that when that happens, we'll lose electricity. And I was thinking about that. And I was like, I, you know, I don't know if that's true because I know down here in the South that if, especially in the summertime, if there's a house that doesn't have electricity, it's condemned mostly because it's too hot. It's yeah. too hot. You, you will, you will, you cannot spend that much time. I mean, you know, I mean, if we lost air, con air condition, we, we, actually, we have lost the power like for a night or two when there's a storm, but it's brutal. That mm. heat is brutal. Uh, yeah. And, um, right. and that, in that, that many days when you have nowhere else to go for relief, you know, if, if it was just your house, you can go stay in a hotel or go stay to a friend's house, but with everybody losing it, like, I don't think that would, I don't think the good guys would do that. I don't think it's going to be quite as bad as we thought. I think yeah. we've been to I think it's more emotional a roller coaster than anything. Yeah. For yeah. The sleepers, you know, yeah. I'm very emotional. Yeah. For the yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, y'all, I don't know if you saw the Tamara message that uh, I did. Again. And I, I, right when she sent me that message, we had somebody like freak out on us for the Jesus strand. And it brought up all this like anger and people. And I was like, and here it is. And yep. here it is, it, you know? So, and I'm sorry, we didn't even get to introduce, we all know Christy. She's got truth seeking with Christy. She's been on the channel all the time, but in her bow, her little bow, man here <laughs> Hello. first time on the panel welcome welcome i wish my boyfriend would come on the panel he's way too shy well, well see, maybe now he's, yeah maybe now that if he sees i'm doing it, he'll come, do on, it. God. come on man he's and he's the one he woke me up to a lot of stuff he's been on this journey for like he's 10 years older than me so i always have to preface that that he's 10 years older than me i'm not as old as he is i'm i'm, I'm, I'm the young I'm seven thing older than her. <laughs> seven older than me so and I also woke her up. I remember showing her videos, the like the Joan, the Joan Rivers video. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Todd had a lot of, um, well, I'll tell you all a funny story. He was the first person that, like, nudged me on to, like, the whole bloodline thing because my great, great, great grandfather was born into the English royal family. And that's so why I mm. carry the actual, they, they like the O negative, and that's what I have. And I had all these weird things happen to me as a kid. Ooh, boom, we're O negative. <laughs> um, we're the royal ones. No, I was kidding. No, the A B negatives are actually royal ones. We're Jesus. I know. We're, we're I Jesus. Know. That's true. I have a little we're bit of Wait, I was just Rocky, that, that, that's <laughs> being selfish, but that was just a joke, guys. <laughs> no, I know. No, um, but but my boyfriend was like teasing me and he was like, he was like, because I have a really long tongue. I have all, I have like a very, like a 96 degrees is my body temperature. It's lower. You know, all the stuff that is common for O negatives, that's uh, Anunnaki or like reptilian. So my boyfriend would like tease me about it. And, I, and he always says my baby pictures look like I was an alien since big head. You know, <laughs> um, he would just like make fun of me about it. He would, he would like, he would, like tell our dog, like mom's going to turn into a lizard, you know, like, and, and all of a sudden I started looking at him and I was like, well, you kind of have some of these these traits as well of the <laughs> RH negative. You actually have, and he's had a lot of like alien experiences where he's seen things. And so lo and behold, he went and got his blood tested. 
He's a negative. Oh. That was like karma's bitch, isn't it? Isn't You've made it? fun of me all these years, and guess what? You should have just said, "Hey, it takes one to know one." <laughs> exactly. Your your ass is already negative too. <laughs> 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 so yeah so yeah well, i actually had a theory about something about this so um you know how they say with the type one or type a human type b human and then you have the negative which or the rh which is so what if the positive is actually like people that was it's just from earth that no That's a other question because I, I and people have asked me that because what i've found on on what i can find on like you know, dot, dot, go, because it's hard to find this stuff on Google, is that, so when you're RH negative, when you don't have the rhesus factor in your blood, mm -hmm. then you're considered to be what they call blood of the gods, gods of the lowercase g. So I take that to mean, you know, we have in the Bible, we have the idea of the watchers, which were fallen angels. What if fallen angels are also aliens? What yeah. if, you know, I don't know what that is. I don't think any of us know what that. I know that's going to trigger some of the fundamentalists, but I don't think any of us know what that actually is. We weren't there to see it, you know? Yeah. Um, and then, so we have the type A. So if you're, so that's why O negative. So if you're O negative, then you have, you don't have either of the A or B antigens in your blood. So I'll tell you what, since we're both O negative, we got to do each other a solid. If I need a blood transfusion, you got to give me some of your blood. And if you need a blood transfusion, I'll give you some of mine because we are the, we can give our blood to everybody, but we can't take from anybody exactly. but O negatives. Um, it's one of the, the hardest bloods to have, but you're the universal giver because everybody, because our blood is what they consider like pure because there's nothing in it. There's yeah. no RH negative. There's no antigens. So it can feed into anybody else's blood. However, if I were to need a, a blood transfusion, I could not take any of your bloods except for yours. Yep. yep. Because if I, my body were to take in like an A antigen or B antigen, it could kill me. Yeah. My body would reject it. Yeah. yeah. So the type A blood is type one human. B blood is type two human. Now I don't know what the difference is. I have no idea like what, what the difference is between the type one and the type two. I'm assuming there is a difference because otherwise they wouldn't be separated. Exactly. Um, and that's why the AB negative is, is really cool. And in the Jesus line, cause you think about Jesus, he was type one human type two human and blood of the gods with a lowercase G. Mm. So yeah. that's, yeah. that's really cool. You know, and, and there's, I, I know there's more to the story. There's absolutely more to the story than yes. even what I found, but that's all, you know, and how, how idiotic were we all these years? We've known that there was been different <laughs> blood types, but we never sat back and were like, this is interesting. No. Well, why does this person say, distracted. I will say that, um, around the time that these ancestry, you know, give us your DNA, we'll give you a pie chart started coming out. I was like. Why the hell do they want our DNA? That's what my boyfriend says too. Yeah. What the hell is it? You know, like, no. And when my mind was going, they're going to plant me at a scene of a crime. You know, I wasn't thinking this deep because I wasn't awake yet. But, I I, but you know, someone, through. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like it was like, as soon as I heard that, it was like, wait, what? We went from everybody scared to touch each other's bloods to now you want me to mail it in? To you mm -hmm. like everybody used to run from blood like everybody's yeah. like oh god blood now you want me to mail it did that you sound right. did you see that i i seen something here just recently where they said that people are not allowed to give blood no nope. they can't but i can't give blood either because i lived in england for over six months what they does think, that have to do with they anything? think you carry mad cow disease <laughs> I'm a vegetarian. Well, this so Bryce, you have mad cow disease, huh? I did. I'm, I'm, also, I'm a vegetarian. But if you lived, I I tried when I was asleep one time. You know, like I didn't realize what you know the bread cross is really all about. Which, trust me, guys, I'm working on a video. I'm working on some stuff about the American Red Cross, but it's 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 going to be sensitive. So I'm going to mm -hmm. have to have to figure out how to tell it because of censorship. But I went to do my my what I thought was the right thing to do. I was going to go and give my blood because I, I have, we have, right. We have the blood everybody wants. We can save everybody. You know, here's my arm and you have to fill out. And I had lived in England for over six months and they were like, oh, sorry, we can't take your blood. And I was like, why? And they're like, mad cow disease. I was like, but I need cows. Like, 
<laughs> wow. That's really so I guess if I go to England I could get blood. But, uh, <laughs> they all have mad cow disease. Uh, <laughs> no, I guess it's fine. It's all... fine. Give it your blood. <laughs> oh, so yeah. yeah, but now we know. Now I would tell people if someone asked me until we until we get everything cleaned up, I would say only give blood unless you know who's receiving it. Like mm -hmm. if it's for a loved one or a friend. Yeah, I don't because, want somebody drinking it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what I was looking at with the Red Cross. Like we have all these natural disasters that happen and they're always coming and asking for our blood. And it's like, but does everyone need a blood transfusion? All I'm mm. going to say is the symbol. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. all. That's what yeah. set me off. I always wonder why is there that just be careful thing around it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. around yeah. It? Don't worry. I'll scan through and mute words if I need to. Yeah. yeah. If I need to, I'll, before I put it up, I'll go right. through it. You guys. Well, also I'll try to catch myself too because it's hard it's it hard to do because you want to be able to talk i was telling tamara i was like you know i find myself because with like her stuff i've just been moving it to rumble because i want her to speak freely because she has so much to say and um i was telling her that like even out in my real life now like i'll be talking to my mom or something and i'll be like you know mr t and the cure like just standing in the yeah. kitchen and I I know, my mom's thing. like what That's i'm like oh mean. I'm not, yep. I'm not being filmed. That's going to be our new <laughs> language. <laughs> the cure, <laughs> you know. Um, so, go to the spa, as Janine said. Janine has the best word. Yeah. She has the best. I love the earth, the earth plane, the spa, oh, yeah. being processed. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a Janine fan myself. I use some of her language on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna she's the queen of that like i i whenever i have to whenever i use one of her words i'm like this just goes out to janine although i'm gonna have to give your husband credit now for the budweiser thing because that's brilliant yeah, that was good brilliant. he's asleep but he he um has the best words for anything like he just he has quite the sense of humor so he could just make up just random words for everything. Like instead of, you know, just, I think a lot of people say this now, but like, I'm, I'm just going to do this per use instead of per usual. Yeah. Like he has, he needs his own dictionary, like for his, mm. his vocabulary. Do y'all remember the show? <laughs> this, it, this took place in Savannah, Georgia. This was like maybe 10 years ago. Ruby about the girl from Savannah, Georgia. She was on the weight loss journey. But she was hysterical and she had words for everything. Like she called her hoo ha, her Christmas, Christmas present or something. Like she had, <laughs> like, I mean, she, oh, sensitive people. She's like, oh, you're just being sensy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was just on her show. Yeah. Just the, the own little vocabulary. That's what you need for, for YouTube. Is, but the thing is, like, we know that the good guys are like in charge. But we're still getting like strikes for stuff. But what I've noticed, because I still I'll watch some channels that are like not in our community. Like I'll watch. I love trashy reality TV. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like I love reality shows. And so I'll go and watch like recaps on like drama channels of like, you know, the Beverly Hills Housewives. And they're starting to, to experience what we've been experiencing. I remember you saying that yeah. with I think tomorrow you guys was actually talking about that. Yeah. So other YouTube. So it's like they have to keep this going so that these people on these other communities, since YouTube's such a huge platform, start to go, wait a minute. Why can't we talk about this thing that's plagued our whole wor world now for, yeah. uh, for a year and a half without getting our channels taken down? That's weird. Yeah. Why? So, so it's actually kind of brilliant. And like, I'm not going to be flipping about it and just be like, whatever, the good guys are in charge. I'll say what I want. No, we have to still like keep up the, the charade almost because, or as Charlie Ward says, the uh, pantomime. Right. Yeah, because it's, it's those people. We need to kind of start nudging them more like, dude, this is happening whether you like it or not. Well, like, right. the, the alarm is going to go off. That show on uh, Netflix, Manifest, mm. we, was oh, yeah. we was watching the third season and halfway through the season they mentioned about armenia about noah's ark on uh mount what is it Era. Uh, yes yeah. and all this because in the storyline they found a piece of wood from noah's ark and when, oh, yeah. when, they, when they said this my mouth was like oh oh 
Yeah. No, I think they have all that stuff anyway. You know, it's interesting. I'm because I do on David Zublick's platform. That's how we started going through the missing books of the Bible. And he has his own platform. So I don't have to worry. We can just talk freely. Um, but a couple of weeks ago, he has this military insider that had found all this stuff regarding Jesus that kind of confirmed a lot of things that we had talked about on the Jesus Grant stand. So I went on the show a second time that week to talk to this guy. Do y'all know, and I had found this in my research too, and I might've talked about it briefly. There's some stuff I find in my research that I just don't even bring up because it's just too much for some people to handle. Um, but I had found in my research that we were told growing up it, as like Gentile Christians that Jesus was born poor right? He was a poor boy. Think about the little drummer boy. I'm a poor boy too. Put up a bum bum, you know, yep. um, do what poor, poor, his parents weren't poor. All these archeologists have found all these things that, that basically signify when we say carpenter, no, he was an architect, I which is what Mr. T that. really is. Mr. T's a builder, yeah. you know, and, and all these archeologists are like, okay, so first century where he was, being the actual job, not a carpenter, but an architect would have been like our architects today, mm -hmm. educated family would have been very prosperous. So I'd already kind of found that information out for myself, which whatever, that doesn't change anything for me and my relationship with Jesus. Does it? That stuff is just bells and whistles. Well, then I'm talking to this military insider and he's like, and I asked him that question. I said, so um, from your understanding was Jesus poor? And he said, no, Jesus was a king. And I said, yeah, no, we know he was the king. He was like, no, he was a literal king of Armenia. And you know, that makes more sense than the bullshit we've been told. Mm -hmm. It really does. It's a lineage. It's a bloodline. It's a lineage. You know, and that's, we, where, it came, that's where it started. Mm -hmm. It was because if that's where the garden of Eden is and everything, yeah. that that's where it's, and I'm going through the book of Jubilee as I was telling Toronto because she's the one that's really taken the lead on this. Mm -hmm. But if you go through the book of Jubilees and you actually pull a map out and you try to find these locations that they're talking about, we know that they've moved country lines, right? They've, they've mm -hmm. moved the lines. Yep. They've gotten rid of some cities. They've rebuilt other cities. It all goes back to that area of that around Armenia and that where Armenia would have been bigger than in the Turkey area. So it makes sense. And um, like in the book of Jubilee, so I was kind of under the impression growing up that the, the Garden of Eden was like protected and we couldn't see it. It was like cloaked or something. Mm -hmm. But in the book of Jubilee, they they talk about the Garden of Eden like it's damn Times Square. They're like, oh yeah, you know, you go to the Garden of Eden, you take you, you walk 10 blocks down, you take a left of the big tree. What if back then that was like that today? Yeah, that was a landmark for them. So, so this is my question now. I'm like, okay, so Adam and Eve we're kicked out of the garden of Eden. So they tell us, and then all of a sudden we just don't know where it is anymore. But yet in these missing books, all these people that came way after Adam and Eve know exactly where it is. What is, what if Armenia is the garden of Eden? Well, we know it's in the garden of Eden. We know the garden. What of Eden if it's Armenia. actually the whole, thing? the whole thing? Maybe. I don't know. Is that just came to me? Like, what if it's the whole, what if Armenia is actually the whole garden of Eden? That's why they kicked I'm getting a fight. Uh, or they kicked Joseph or what's uh, Adam, Adam and Eve out. Well, you know, and according to the book of Jubilees, um, Adam and Eve were not created in the garden. They were created outside of the garden. And then the garden was created for them and God put them in the garden. Okay. that Okay. So all these stories. And, and I tell David this all the time, you know, not only have, has the Bible been altered, but it's also been translated how many times now? over what what are we and that's the thing like when the federal reserve took over the education here in the united states in the early 20th century or took over the federal reserve which is created anyway it also took over our education before mm -hmm. the federal and it created what we call in the united states public schools i know that in england public schools are like our private schools you english confuse me sometimes but in <laughs> the united states public schools are like government schools that you don't have to pay for that mm -hmm. most people go to it's just it's just there and they have mandatory you have to have certain amount of under indoctrination right? right which before all this we thought oh this is great we're educating people they have to have x amount of education no, it was indoctrination. Well, before that creation, people were learning Greek. They were learning Latin, all these old languages. 
like just your typical education, you would learn how to, you could go and take a manuscript out of the Vatican library and freaking read it. Know what it says. If somebody handed me the keys to the Vatican library today and said, you have, you know, a week to go through everything. I just give them the keys back and be like, I don't well, know. You can use Google says. Translate. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like in my phone, like trying to figure out like, what is this caricature? What is this you symbol? Know? I can't find this symbol in my phone. I know. Like, what the hell is this mean? It'll take you all week just to make one word. Yeah. One, we have one sentence, <laughs> like, and it's trying to like, and then he saw a cat. I'm like, great. The one right. sentence that well, doesn't mean really a whole lot. Cat, <laughs> so, but you think about that, not only did they take this information from us, did they rip us of that actual true story of our own salvation, but then they took our ability to actually be able to read it if we were to eventually find it. Yeah. Yep. Like those sons of bitches. Yep. And then they took out cursive so people couldn't read the damn constitution. Or sign. Yeah. At least we yeah. at least we had to take cursive. I can I can read cursive. I can <laughs> too. Girl. I can my, too. My mama still writes in cursive, so I, I think can everybody read. here can. I took yeah. my kid cursive because I homeschool him. So good for you. Nice. Y'all remember having yeah. to do that as kids though, like drawing each letter, capital letter, <laughs> like in lower school. You up the school? On, um, I hate to say it, but Amazon. I mean, they have they have books that you can get to teach your kids how to do it. My son actually wanted to learn how to do it, so he knows how to sign a check. Nice, nice. You know so, what I like about cursive. If the, you get to a word and you're not quite sure how it's spelled, you, you can just do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You do it yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do that. That's inspiration. <laughs> that was what, that's how we got it. Because for the younger, if there's anybody younger watching us, I tell all of my friends' kids, Christy and I are the same age. I don't know how old you guys. We're 38. We're, we're 30. up against, uh, yeah. backed up against 40, you know. Um, but when we were kids, I tell my friends' kids all the time, like, we had to freaking earn our information there was no google you had to go to the freaking library to go through the dewey Start decimal the system thingy it was a scavenger hunt a scavenger hunt it was yeah and so so we didn't have google to like now if i need to check a word i'll like google it to make sure i'm spelling it right but back then youngsters watching we didn't have that yeah. so you learned how to write cursive so if you're writing an essay and you got to some word and you're like <laughs> i'm 46 so and i'm a terrible speller i know all about me too. that me yeah too. my boyfriend's 49 yeah oh no sorry he he's claiming he's still 48 because he didn't get to celebrate his birthday no. <laughs> because of the last year. <laughs> that's fun i really think like it's so funny because i grew up so bad at academics and everything and i could not understand them and christy and i were talking offline about this one day and we it's like we're all coming to the realization a lot. A lot of us that had problems in school, we just didn't buy the BS they were teaching us. Yeah, and exactly. We're I'm a high school dropout. I knew my soul knew I couldn't go. I couldn't be there. And I, I start. I got into drugs when I was fourteen. I just I couldn't listen. Just like no, I don't want to yeah. hear your shit. And then I was supposed to go to college, and then I went for like three quarters, and then uh -huh. that never went back. And I'm so yeah. glad. Well, I went to med. I, I went to school to become a medical assistant. It's very similar to a nurse. It's like the person who brings you in for your doctor's appointments. Mm -hmm. And I'm very interested in, you know, the body and, you know, medicine and all how that works. And I got straight A's when I almost flunked out of my senior year of high school, barely got by. Um, but then once I was told, oh, well, you can't check up on patients and talk to patients and make sure they're okay. And you're, you're, you're taking too much, too long with the patients and this and that. Cause I, you know, I could feel their emotions, yeah. you know, I have an empath's um, personality and I'd be pulled aside and be threatened. Well, you're going to get written up if you take too much time with the patients. I'm like, is this about money or is this about, you know, is this about patient care? Right. Yeah. So, that's where my soul wasn't jiving anymore with that. And I, I couldn't do it anymore. Yep. I come from a family, a medical family. Uh, my mom's family, the Bryce's, that's where I get my name from. Um, like the, the stadium, the stadium at the university of South Carolina is the Williams Bryce stadium, big South Carolina family. They're all freaking doctors. And I, I, it was brought to my attention. My grandfather, my mom's dad, came to Georgia after my mom was born. They came to Georgia because he was kind of recruited to come here. And he ended up over the years, he ended up becoming head of surgery for a clinic here in Georgia. And he, he was 56 years old when he passed away of cancer.
And the story goes that he was fine. And then like he was diagnosed and six months later. He- well, over, I asked Janine this question. Um, she read it for me. <coughs> over these conversations I've had with certain people off <coughs> air, I've, I've relayed that story because I'm learning more now that my grandfather was actually pushing back against. Wow. He knew, and this is in the 80s. Mm. This is in the 80s. He took his oath to help people live very, very seriously. And he had, he didn't have an issue with, with some pharmaceuticals. He just thought big needed to know their place. Let the yeah. doctors decide what's best for the patient. Mm-hmm. Yes. You. And, and somebody, somebody said to me offline, someone we, you know, that's got some mm-hmm. knowledge said, he said, I, I would look into that more. Your grandfather just, just. Mm-hmm. And so I asked Janine to read the, the cards and sure enough, the cards basically said he was removed. They shut him up. And he had information, explosive information that he was planning on taking. Guarantee it. To reporters. Mm. Back when the, the media wasn't so. And Most people don't realize just how sinister, you know, the is. And part of my job was making sure people were up to date with certain, you know, um, things in the arm and mm-hmm. um, up to date with certain testing and everything. And I noticed something very unusual about it is I found out through the grapevine and that doctors get graded. They get mm-hmm. graded. If they're not, it's, it's almost like if they get so many people per, I think every six months or a year to, to get, you know, whether it's the childhood ones or whatnot, um, if, if they don't get a certain amount of people, you know, given these, they don't get a certain amount of money exactly. from it's like yeah, cops yeah. Having to give out certain amount of tickets yeah. Hmm? Yeah, at the end then the month cops are bad like they're everywhere not bad we love we love the police but quota. like they're everywhere because they have to get the quota right that's what when you, i was like i felt like my stomach it, exactly it's a quota and it's disgusting and like i live in connecticut so a lot of our doctors up here if you don't get your child you know what um you refuse those Oftentimes, Child Protective Services is called. What? Hell no. Mm-hmm. My dad apparently wants to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's, I've learned a lot of horrific things about that line of work. And I don't want my name anymore attached to it. So, like, for me, I'm probably going to be going into healing, like, probably, like, Reiki and stuff like that, trying to heal people naturally. So yeah. that's something. Nice. Because I don't part of that that's well before we before we hit record everybody watching we had like a 20 minute conversation we were just like shooting the shit and we were talking a lot about uh food and we were talking about like the dip that we're just not taught in the west to to eat properly mm-hmm. and for everybody you know no there's it's not one size fits all and your health has a lot to do with your consciousness and that's part of like natural healing is to understand that, like I was saying, I was, you know, we were talking about it and I was saying like, I can't eat a raw apple because it makes me sick. But if I eat it cooked, I can do it. That's because I'm Vata, you know, but a person who's Kappa can do that. So we, 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 we've been denied that education. And Stephanie, you, you brought up a good thing about like us eating meat. Now I'm, I will say like, I'm not, a, obviously not, we're not doctors. This is just all our, our personal opinions, but I am, I am meat free. And I've been meat free for a very long time. And um, part of the RH negative, a lot of RH negative people, I, when I was a little kid, I used to get really sick whenever I, I, I ate meat. So I just kind of became a vegetarian without even knowing what a vegetarian was originally. And so for like 20, over 20 years now, I've been without meat. And I'm the healthiest I've ever been in my life, 38 years old. And I over to eating vegetarian because of my blood type. And there's been times where I've had no choice. Yeah. Um, with a picnic or something for a family. And I am, it, it emotionally, spiritually affects me. Yeah. I, so I, I'm taking it one day at a time, but it, it affects me. And I, you the know, people way. can laugh at me because they have about it, but I feel you. I yeah. Stay free. It's I hard. Agree. Yeah. It's the more you, you, the more you back away from it, the more it starts to really, Mm -hmm. impact you about what that actually is and we were talking about it because you know the gospel of the holy 12 which is by far 
been my favorite of all the missing gospels. And the actual, the original name was the gospel of the Nazarene way, which I think we should go. I say the Holy 12, cause that's how it's known now, but the Nazarene way, because we know that the numbering 12 and 13 was not really that it, it there was more than 12 apostles basically he had a but he had like he had like he had a rally everywhere he was going you know he traveled from yeah, exactly. Exactly. yeah exactly exactly well in that gospel jesus is very almost every single chapter is there is something to do with animals and not to eat animals and even like uh, uh, overusing animals like work or a beast of burden like we know that some animals are like like dogs we know dogs like to go on walks be careful in case he starts barking. That's one of his trigger words. Because <laughs> when they walk, they smell and they get to be the pack and they feel like they're doing a job. And we even know as human beings, when we do a job, we feel more accomplished, you mm -hmm. know? So they, there is certain labor that animals like to do. But even when we overwork them, Jesus would stop people from overworking animals. And he would say, one of my favorite lines that actually got me emotional when I first read it was like, do they not breathe the same air that you breathe? They are your brothers and sisters too. And, um, and we are out talked about that because there's a scene in the Bible. Everybody knows the scene where Jesus takes the fish and multiplies it for all the people. What well, wasn't fish, according to the gospel of the Holy 12, the gospel, of the Nazarene way, it was fruit and bread that he divided, which yeah. makes way more sense. It does. As long as you don't take away bread up. I know bread. Yeah. Well, the bread. Give us, Lord, our daily bread, right? <laughs> I love. Um, I'm, I'm a, a bread. I'm, a bread. I'm, I'm not one of those no carb people. I I'm plant based, but I like my I like my Doritos and my Tostitos and <laughs> I like the lime Tostitos and. Yep. Um, I'm a, I'm a so, bread person myself, but every time I, I eat, bread. it doesn't matter <laughs> what kind of meat it is. I think about it while I'm eating it, while I'm preparing it. I'm like, you shouldn't eat this. This is not right. Something in there is telling me and something's trying to get me to go. And I'm a big person of telling people to listen to the, your inner self. And I don't do it myself. But this <laughs> one thing, I just can't break away from it for some reason. Well, it will. It will I think, you know, and, and I think the fact that you're already recognizing, I think, is the first step anyway. And you, we have to remember, because we were talking about this. I believe this is just my opinion. I can't prove this. We know that we, we can prove, we do know that Constantine the Great in the fourth century, the Council of Nicaea, this was when everything got the first time. That was like home base. That was the starting point of him just completely, he, A, he turned Jesus into a satanic Jesus. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's plenty of videos on that. He totally changed Jesus' story. Everything about the story became very satanic, even the virgin birth. The, the people, a lot of Christians get very upset about this. <laughs> which doesn't matter to me because God is God. God can do whatever we want. If Jesus came through Joseph and Mary, then it's still the son of God. It's just not the, but if you know, like all these satanic gods, especially the Nephilim Dionysus, these Greek goddesses that we know now were, were Nephilim. They were giants were like, what is it? The um, demons, this, this incubus, like the band, that band when we were kids, incubus, incubus, incubus and uh, the succubus. <laughs> Those are demons that would come and mate with humans, right? That's a form of R A P E. And get these women mm -hmm. pregnant. Mm -hmm. And then they would have these babies that were half demon mm -hmm. spirit, half human. All right. Constantine changed the birth story of Jesus. If you go back and look at the missing gospels, it's very clear. You know, the angel comes to Mary and says, you know, don't. Be, I love it. I love it. Even in the missing gospels, as well as the canonized Bible, you know, it's a good spirit where they're like, don't freak out. Yo, yeah. I know I'm scary. Don't freak out. Like it's the first thing yeah, they say is yeah. don't be afraid. Don't freak out, man. It's cool. It's cool. I'm an angel. It's cool. You know, <laughs> don't crap your pants. It's cool. Um, yeah, well, demons don't yeah. do that so much. Um, but they told Mary, you know, they, they told Mary, but they also went to Joseph and told Joseph, go to Mary on this particular night. Go be with your, go lay with your wife, you know? And my, my uh, friend, Cindy, who I, I teach at her, her shala on Sunday, she's been on this channel too. We were actually talking about this yesterday at Hershala. At the Council of Nicaea, specifically, they deemed that Jesus was 100% man, but also 100% God. But now we've taken away all the aspects of man from Jesus to make him God. Why can't, yeah. if, if God sent his son to earth, of course he's going to be married. Of course mm -hmm. he's going to have children. He's going to experience being a human being. 
And yep. part of that life experience is having a mate, having <laughs> passion for a, a partner, having children, feeling the angst of protecting your children. Mm -hmm. We know we had three kids and we don't, we only know one of the names, you know, Sarah, that's it. But the mm -hmm. other two kids, you're shitting me. Yeah. I had three kids. Oh my. Okay. I got, I got to interject something here. All right. When I was starting to figure out that something that, that we were magical, we had all these. Anyway, I was asking my spirit guys and I got that name. Sarah. Oh yeah. That was the one that we thought that we, the line we pretty much follow is through Sarah. Um, but there's two that. other kids that we don't <laughs> And a lot of the missing gospels, the whole thing was because Jesus was, well, if he was a king, there you go. But he was a wanted man, right? Yeah. He's of a, of a royal lineage. And so he had to protect his children. And so there's a reason why some of their names are not spoken about because it was a protection. Um, and he loved his children. He loved his children. So, um, so yeah, so that, that was one thing Constantine changed. Of course, he changed the birthday. We, we gave Jesus a, a satanic birthday. Sorry, guys. And, and I believe I'm of the belief that Christmas, Mardi Gras, like eat all these, these celebrations we have that we now know are satanic. I believe we can make them. I love Christmas. And I think New Orleans is great with Mardi Gras. You know, I've got, actually got the Mardi Gras colors on right now. Um, if, if we coming into the new, new earth, we can make those pure things. We can make them love. And, but we have to understand where they came from. And that they, it was a manipulation which we know his real birthday was what? September 24th or 11th on the Julian, but it's actually September 24th, this calendar, Gregorian. So it's this Friday. Yeah. When the supposed to be out. Oh, yeah. what a coincidence. Oh my yeah. God. But if you go back, it's not even just the one day in 2001, we all remember. But if you go back, negative 48 is good. He, all these horrific things have happened on that particular day. And it's because they wanted to taint that day. They didn't mm -hmm. want us being excited on that day. They wanted us in sorrow because yeah. they're trying to invert everything. Right. And so anyway, we we're talking about eating meat. Sorry. I was trying to explain. Well, Constantine, <laughs> I believe that Constantine took all the vegetarian stuff out because, and I, I have to be careful. What I say. We know what we know now. We know about the, um, as Janine says, the party drug, the special wine. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you're probably just now stumbling upon this channel and you're probably just now waking up. So I would not suggest looking that up first. Yeah, no, <laughs> Look everything else up not. first. That should come yeah. later. But the party drug, we know that that comes from, which runs through our flesh. And so when an animal is slaughtered, Mm -hmm. that same chemical release. So they're getting us addicted to this chemical, basically this party drug without us. Even exactly. knowing. We had talked about that before. And I said, what if this is it? You and can, you could ask him. There has been times like this is, I haven't had this for a while, but a couple years ago, I'd get in this mood where I just want meat. Like I'd get this craving for meat. I wanted meat. Mm -hmm literally would go out and, and make like four sausage patties and eat them i just wanted meat yeah and now i've never I'm, seen anybody have and that now i'm just crazy. like i'm trying to like i thought it was just like iron i watched that where when you said these animals are their life is taken and that 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 stuff is going through and that you know that the 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 energies the bad like energies because especially if they're before they were you know with with farming, with factory farming and you eat it. And the thing is, is that I grew up, my dad used to be friends with a, a guy and he used to would take me up to the slaughter slaughterhouse with them. And I can remember going in there and seeing cows and pigs hanging, you know, the, the, oh. this was, this is what I was, you know, and I just, you know, that was, I, I've always had love for animals. I didn't like seeing that. You can ask him. I, I'm, I will literally cry. I, we can't go even to town. I don't know. You think the dogs are okay? I'm uh, the same he's way. Like, he's like, yes, they're fine. I'm like, you sure? Nothing's no, going to happen. Burn, it's going to burn down. Like I can promise her nothing's going to happen. <laughs> I'm the same <laughs> wow, way. And I get, I, oh, I, it's called catastrophe thinking. I've learned that from a therapist. It's called <laughs> catastrophe thinking. I, my dog, our little Robbie, um, for our rescue from India, like I would literally take a bullet from him. Like I love that dog so much. And he is literally, I know, I, listen, I understand like children and our children, and animals are animals, but to me, he is like one of my children. Mm -hmm. Like I love him so much and oh. I would literally take a bullet from him. And when we go, 
when we go out of the house, I'm the same thing. I'm like, oh my God, what if there's a fire? And Todd's right? like, there's not gonna be a fire. I'm like, but what if there is? Well, this one time that we don't have them, there's a fire, you know? The same way. Sometimes I have to check in my bag. Unplugged, like I will plug unplug everything in my house. So my husband, I drive him absolutely insane. He's like, nothing's gonna happen. I'm like, but you don't know that. The one the okay, one like, time. Yeah. I'll go. I do the same thing. I and our our dog only stays by himself for like three hours once a week. On Sunday morning, my boyfriend teaches at his shawl and I have a class in the suburbs. And it's like three hours. He's by himself. But you better believe, like, I have to leave first because I can't bear to be the one to put him up. Like, I can't emotionally take it. Todd has to do it. I can't, I can't take it. I, I got my mother. I was so upset about having to leave our dog once a week that my mother went and got us one of those cameras so we could watch him. But of course, Todd won't, Todd won't put it up because, you know, spying. I'm like, they're already spying. <laughs> We have iPhones. We have computers. They're already. We have a, a smart TV. They're they're already. Yeah, smart. they already know what we're they're saying. Already. Yeah, I so, know all that too. I'm but I still won't like let, let in. Huh? What was it? like an Alexa or um, something like yeah. that? Oh, yeah. That that stuff would never come in my home. Our dog. We don't have an Alexa, but we have that but one camera where you can watch your. You can talk to your pets through the camera, and oh. like you get a special one where we'll, like throw a treat out at the, yeah. at the animal. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm scared that our dog would actually start swatting it if it threw a tree out, a tree out of it. But, um, but yeah, Todd was like, we are not, my mom got it for us. And Todd was like, I don't want the see watching our dog. Do you? I was like, well, <laughs> it that way. No, <laughs> <laughs> I no camera set up because my son was starting to get old enough where he could stay home by himself. So he'd come home from school and he had his phone to call us and everything. But sometimes he would like sneak up doing like, Things that maybe, you know, he was lying about a couple of things. I think at the time I'm trying to remember back because it was a few years ago. And you could talk through the camera. And my husband would sometimes scare the living snot out of me at times by talking in a cell phone through the camera. Well, one day it was really late at night. He wasn't back from work yet. And somebody was talking to me through it. And it was a very evil voice. It wasn't him. But I texted him and I said, did you just try to talk to me in an evil way, evil voice through the camera? He goes, what are you talking about? I said, that thing is getting put away now. Yeah. It well, you know, me what, you know what Frank Fox is? Do you know what Frank Fox is? I, I worked with Frank Foxes before. So mm -hmm. I don't know how to control them. You know, yeah, I've seen, people know how to like work them. A Frank Box, and I'm pro I might be explaining this wrong. This is the best of my ability. It's like a radio, but it like catches the waves in between stations. Like Bumblebee off of Transformers. He uses the talking through his radio. Yeah. And it picks up spirits. It can pick up mm -hmm. conversations. And I've done things before with people on a Frank box and it does pick up like conversations and yeah. spirit. It's, it's, they use technology, mm -hmm. which think about it guys. Like if, if the powers that be, bad guys knew about this way and they've, they've kind of inundated us with technology. Who's to say they aren't able to send their, 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 I don't know how to say it. Their demons yeah. into our homes. I, oh, I'm quite certain they do. Yeah. I've, I've I'm that. quite certain I've been, I've been, been playing one of the Winchester brothers or some, cause I've been fighting them and kicking them out of my house. I I get um, I was telling Tamara I get attacked a lot. Um, ever since I was a kid, I've 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 been attracted. Uh, Tamara informed me that which I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That there's a, an entity that's kind of a, attacks me. It's like a lizard being that will attack me. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. I used to get scratched. Well, I still get scratched. I wake up with bruises. Um, and there was one day I was getting out of the shower, and my back was turned towards my boyfriend. I was like drying off, whatever. And I had been scratched that night. Like I got up and had scratches all over me. Usually I'm like, Oh look, this is interesting. And Todd's like taking pictures. I'm like, do not put those on the internet. <laughs> um, but um, anyway, I had my back towards him and I was drying off and Todd said he just watched a scratch just appear down my back, just live, oh, blood coming down. He just saw it. Didn't see the entity, just saw the scratch. But I warn you, ladies, like when you start doing this, when you start putting your voice out there, you will get, you'll, oh, you're, you know, you got to be ready for that spiritual warfare. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and it, 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 
I know. <laughs> Listen, we've lived through the matrix. Bring yes. it. <laughs> right. I've already walked through hell about 10 times. There is nothing I've got left that they can throw at me. You know, I love so Christy's done a round table with the boys from Mystery Archives. I just love mm -hmm. them. They're like they're young, they're they're adorable. They have this great channel, Mystery Archives. They do great work. Um, oh, but we cool. were talking about Brett. Uh, one of the guys said something that it just meant I it just really struck true to me when he said it that the the one thing demons don't understand is laughter. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't hmm. understand laughter. So if it happens to you, just laugh at it. Yeah. I don't know what to do. Well, I mean, I've been laughing at him this whole time. So, <laughs> I mean, I've kind yeah. of started to do that with the the C A B A L now. The members that are left, yeah. you know that they're they're not hurting anyone anymore. Like we know that's not happening. I'm like, you guys look like idiots. Yeah, yeah. No. and you know, I see like people that I'm on friends with on Facebook that are not quite awakened, and they're taking all this stuff so seriously, and I'm just laughing because he's he's gone already. I just yeah. I know. That. Oh, you know? yeah, it's an actor. I, mean, I have in insiders down at Tyler Perry studio, like. Nice. The real, the real what, guy. What? Do what? What, what, what? So what Tyler Perry studio is here. It's south of Atlanta. It's, I think it's still in the city, technically in the city. Um, and I was working with top numbers on like a live show once and it hit us that he was doing some gematria and like, what was it? Uh, Checkmate and Atlanta are the same Demontria and the military back channel had put that in and things about Castle Rock Studios, all that kind of stuff. And Tyler Perry studio is down here. Well, there's a complete replica of the White House. Mm -hmm. Like complete. You know, usually mm -hmm. it's just sets, but this is like a complete replica. Mm -hmm. and so, And this was around the time where you kept looking at DC and it was like, nobody's there like the there were the lights were off i'm trying to be careful what i say um but the lights were no one was home let's just say you right. guys know which home i'm talking about the lights were off right. no one was there so and then people started showing pictures of like mr b giving a speech in the you know the particular garden that really does really well with roses if you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um and then the the same area with mr t when there were there was somebody home and it was two different you look at them side by side it's different and so i, mean, I just drove my boyfriend i drove down to the Prairie studio one day and i i was we were walking up around we didn't have we didn't get into the property we were walking on the property and i walked up to the gate and there was a guy like doing the lawn and I just asked him through the, the gate. I was like, hey, is there is there a, a house that happens to be white here? I didn't say it that way. And he was like, oh, yeah, it's just right over there. And so we confirmed it was there. And then one of my friend's neighbors works there. And so he confirmed that they escort the actors in at like 4 o'clock in the morning. Mm. Wow. Oh. Did any guys um, back in, I think it was March or April, probably April, I tend to look at the White House, um, the, the live feed quite often. And one night I couldn't sleep. So I'm like, I'm just going to go. I don't know. Something made me check on the live feed. And I, I, I swear, like, I was blown away. I, I'm pretty darn certain I was witnessing about 20 UFO landings at the real White House. Oh, I would be surprised. The, the, so, so. You could see it was not planes. There was no blinking lights on these. It wasn't a helicopter. They were way too slow. And when it got closer to the camera, it had this very odd, like, almost a halogen light, like a purpley halogen light. And you could see it kind of spinning. And then their light would go off. And then I was trying to zoom in. I couldn't zoom in enough. And you could see it kind of like coming down. And I took a bunch of pictures. Of course, that phone crashed on me shortly after. Gee, I wonder why. Um, <laughs> but like 20 of them. Yeah. Well, it's like the giants. Have you guys seen that there are pictures with Mr. T of like actual giants? And the minute they're posted, they get taken down. Mm -hmm. Like they will not. But they're with him. And that's why I keep telling people like the Nephilim, we know the Nephilim were giants, but the giants were not all the giants were Nephilim. 
Right. And I don't clients are bad, I don't think either. No, exactly. Yeah. And um, uh, the military insider on David's channel, I asked him about the giants and he said, he, and I said something about did you know the, the existence of giants and he was like, well, yeah, they still exist. You just don't see them. They're still out there. We've always lived with the giants. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> like, I'm like, this is crazy. Have y'all seen the pictures of the two sons? Yeah, yeah, I've but I've heard about him. I've heard about I, him. I can hold on one second. I can show you a pic. I think. Let me see if I can do this. Um, yeah. Oh, no, it's that. not going to let me. I'll say I can pull it up. I'll put it for those who are watching. I'll put it when I go through and edit. I'll put the picture up on the screen for everybody watching. Um, but yeah, that, that we have two sons. The sun looks very, very different. It's like to me, when I look at it, it looks a lot more whitish than yellow. Crystal. Our yeah. sun is apparently crystal. But what does Revelation say about this time? We go from having mortal bodies to light wow. bodies. And I don't think that means that you're going to actually wake up one day and have a completely different body. I think you're going to still see the body you have. It's just going to start healing itself mm -hmm. yeah. it's all and, and starting to regenerate itself a little bit better. I feel like I have actually even asked um, Janine about that once because I, I used to struggle with uh, arthritis. And ever since... The, the Budweiser flu came about all of a sudden my, it cleared up and I feel healthier at 38 than I did at 28. And I was asking Janine, I was like, I don't want to like, I don't want this to sound like a spiritual manipulation or anything, but is something going on? And she read the cards and she said, yeah, the more you stand in the truth, the more the light starts to come in and filter through your DNA. I remember seeing, seeing you talk about that. And I have been trying to practice standing in my truth. And if you wouldn't mind next time you talk to Janine, give her a big hug and a thank you for me because she's really one of the ones that really pushed me over the edge to really empower myself. Um, you know what I'll do? I got to text her because I know she's super busy right now. Oh, um, God. But I, so I usually have to book her like a month in advance. But next oh, time yeah. I get her, next time I talk to her, bring on my, my channel. Why don't you guys come on too? Oh, my oh gosh. Oh, my God. I don't miss Janine? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my oh God. My I've been wanting. And Tamara. I want yeah. Janine and Tamara. Oh, you're going to make me emotional. Yeah. Oh, oh, my I'll God. actually send Janine this clip. Yeah. So I know she's looking for busy, so she books out, you know, she's got a lot of shows she does. So sometimes it takes a little you know, while later on. When I, I'm so excited for her success. I like she's helped me empower me so much, empower myself. Like her success makes me happy because she deserves it. She deserves yeah. it so much. She yeah. Janine is a wonderful. Sorry. That's okay. There she's one of those people, like there's a lot of truthers out there and it's I, I think some people are, are failing still to understand that this is a movie. Mm -hmm. And so there's still a lot of misunderstanding or negative thoughts and such. And when I first got into this, a lot of people were talking about like, uh, I don't know if I could say this, uh, guillotines and like the camps and everything like that. And mm -hmm. I'm like, and when I first came into this whole thing, I was, like I said in the beginning of this show, like I was very indoctrinated by the Bible. And it's like, okay, do I have to prep myself for possibly not taking a mark of the beast kind of a thing and, and getting like, you know, beheaded and stuff. Um, and I, I was starting to get really nervous, but as I started to watch her channel, it was reluctant at first because I was a Christian, you know, no, no tarot cards when you're a Christian, we were told. But when I started to watch her, I'm like, no, she's more joyous than when I go to church and see people yeah. at church. Well, that's funny. So I love that you brought that up because, you know, we, we talked a lot about how the church totally mind scrambled us when it comes to divination and divination itself is not. Mm -hmm. bad. Um, and that that a lot of the prophets in the Bible were using divination. So mm -hmm. I love that you said that because you now have cards, don't you? I yeah. do. And what's, what's very interesting is like, so going back to like, you know, the whole divination thing, like I find it funny. I was at a church and I said to the pastor one day, I said, I had some dreams and visions that I want to talk to you about. And I think they really resonate with like end time stuff and not reading it symbolic. Now I know what those dreams meant. Um, but she looked at me and said, well, I think you have a prophetic gift. However, we need to have you take a multiple choice test for that. And I am like, okay. I thought to myself, I went home and I'm like, 
I don't remember reading about Isaiah or Jeremiah or the disciples or Joseph. Or the prophets taking a test. This is like what? Yeah. I mean, Joseph. Joseph bit from uh, you know. There's lots of Josephs in the Bible, just like there's lots of Marys in the Bible. I'm talking <laughs> yeah. about Jacob's son Joseph, who got who got basically off to bleep that word out into Egypt. And what what was his gift of deciphering dreams? That's mm -hmm. a form of divination, guys. That's a form of yeah. mediumship, you know. And my friend Cindy and I were talking about that as well. That the tools that so <laughs> there was a meme going around a few years ago that I loved, and it was like, you say you're spiritual. But demons are spiritual too. Please specify, mm. you know, like, <laughs> you know, the, the spiritual world, like I say, Mr. T is very spiritual. Well, guess what? Hillary is also very spiritual. Mm -hmm. They're just serving two different, but the, the ways to communicate through that veil are the same. They use the same tools, the same telephones, just like the bad guys use an iPhone and we use an iPhone. Mm -hmm. you know, the bad guys use the internet. We use the internet to talk to each other. The conduit, the person that's doing the work is where the light or the darkness lies. And people like Janine, people like Tamara are mm -hmm. so, that's what um, Negative 48 said. Like she's, she's channeling the divine. It's yeah, the intention behind it. Do I? And you know, it's the intention behind it. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, like you watched her, um, you know, she teaches you how to read the cards, yeah. you know, on Patreon. So it's like, once you know the cards, you know what those cards mean. You know, you, it's not like uh, she could pull one over on us. Right. You know, we're the same damn cards come on over and over again. And it gives me so much hope. You know, yeah. she's my, I watch her every day. She's my coffee. Yeah. You know, you know what? I, I told her last time I had her on my show, I told her she was the anchor woman for the divine. And then I noticed okay. in the comment section, people were like hashtagging it. And so last time I spoke to her, I was like, Janine, we started a hashtag. <laughs> like, you're the anchor woman for the divine. Um, but the thing is, what, and she's, very, she's very honest about the fact that when she was first on YouTube, that she was watching CNN, mm -hmm. that she was not a fan of Mr. T. Yeah. And, it, and because she's such a good reader and she's able to kind of put her ego aside and look at what the cards are saying, she was able to course correct. Yep. You know, and to me, the fact that she shares that story, it, it just shows you that she's humble. She's using the tool of divination for the right reasons. She's oh, yeah. not doing it to pump herself up because obviously she was wrong. And, and, mm -hmm. she'll, and, and the fact that she was able to like own that and, and move forward and join us and join our community and be such a powerful voice for, um, for yeah you're right there's more joy on her shows than most church services mm -hmm. yeah. like the last church service i went to was probably two months ago i had just joined my church's worship team and i'm sitting there listening to the sermon and it was like you're nothing you're not this you're not that you can't do anything without god and i'm like thinking to myself um god's within us yeah yeah exactly. and like you said, i know you've said this a lot on your channel God didn't make junk. Yeah. No. I and mean, if we were nothing, why would our DNA spell Yahweh? Yeah. I didn't know that. Wow. Why do you think they're trying to manipulate it so badly? Because mm -hmm. they want what, and that's the thing. So my boyfriend follows the law of one, which can be married with Christian. It can be married with any religion. And the woman who channeled the law of one was a big Christian. And it talks about negative and positive polarity. And when you're in the light, when you're a positive polarity, whether you're a human being or an angel or whatever, you can create, you can create on your own. You can create things. That's what the light does. Think about photosynthesis, what the light does. The darkness can't create anything. That's why they have to take from, think about the movie Hocus Pocus when we were kids and they, the movie yes. Hocus Pocus, what they were doing. You all know what we're talking, the, the um, party drug. Again, if you don't know what we're talking about, there are other things to look at before you look at that. That's not what you want to start um, with. Um, uh, once you get up. Yeah. That's when you start going, Oh crap. Um, yeah. yeah. But um, they, they, that's what they have to take. That's what they have to give. You think about the Bible and Leviticus, they talk about Moloch. They talk about passing through the fire because mm -hmm. they have to take the essence of that divine spark. And when I was researching the Bible and I realized, and this, I've said this in a lot of shows as well, because it just, 
hit me like a bolt of lightning. Genesis 1, 3 said, God, God said, let there be light. Now, as a child growing up in Sunday school and vacation Bible school, when you read that verse, you just think, oh, God, God created the sun and we can see things now. It's just like turning on a light. The original <laughs> language and the people that couldn't even read it, but heard it, the word that was used for light meant divine spark. Wow. God said, let there be a divine spark. That divine spark isn't, we all have it, even though we all have it and all the animals have it, it's also very personal. So if Genesis 1, 3 said, let there be a divine spark, he's talking about every single human being on this planet mm -hmm. being represented in Genesis 1, 3. When you were created, it's like he put that divine spark in you specifically, you and God, that anointing between you and God, nobody else was there. Your pastor wasn't there. No one was there. Your parents weren't there. Your spouse wasn't there. It was you and it was God. Mm -hmm. they you that divine spark. It's weird because I, um, I've gone my whole, <laughs> you know, feeling close to God and everything. I've always been spiritual since I could probably, since I was probably in diapers, honestly, but I never felt that closeness, you know, that we, you know, a, a close closeness to, you know, him going through church and everything. And now that I've been out of that and, you know, using tools to connect and everything, it's like, I feel God so much stronger than ever before. Yeah. That's like whole experience has made me be closer to God. Thing. Yeah. It's made me because mm -hmm. we've learned. That's what we've learned through everything through this, this great awakening is like, we've learned to take our sovereignty back. Whether mm -hmm. that's and your education, whether that's, you know, doing your own research, because even even my channel, I know all four of us, we present you with information, but we want you to do your own research. Don't take our word for it. We're just showing you any, something that we found that's interesting. You know, look at this. What do you think? You know, um, so don't don't take your pastor, your pastor. If you're going to your pastor for everything, you're not mm -hmm. sovereign. Mm -hmm. You're not sovereign. He tells you what to do. Yeah. And it's like, I would go and I would ask a question and, or say like, oh, I feel God has told me I need to do this, this, and this. Um, I can't come up with an example off the top of my head, but this has happened several times. Well, did you pray about it? Yes, I did. That's how I heard him. <laughs> Are you sure? Like, you need to like, really, you need to sit down in prayer for a couple hours and you need to really like. And I, and it just made me so discouraged. And it's like, why don't, and I always thought to myself, why don't pastors like me? Cause they never have liked me. Maybe cause they, I don't know, maybe whatever demon attack. Of you. I can see right through it. Yeah. Like, you're going to, yeah. You're, they don't like questions, man. Yeah. They don't like questions at all. And I'm a questioner. I question, I just don't see past. I, I mean, I see past the, the BS. I can, I can see right through people. I can feel people's vibes and everything. I can feel their, you know, if someone's like faking it, you know, to, to like me, I know it right off the bat. Right. I know maybe yeah. that's what they like. I can see right through them. Yeah. Well, that's exactly you ruffle, you ruffle their feathers because they, they don't like questions. And if they see that you might start questioning, they're like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't and it's really always like, well, are you going to get left behind when the rapture comes? Oh my gosh, if I, I get asked what if you're awake, you are raptured. That's why I keep telling people no that's one's gonna no one's gonna Lord float off the freaking earth. Man. We're not gonna just dissipate up into the air Can and you? the clothes be laying there on the ground. You're I'm raptured sorry. already. You're here. The God that I worship would never do something that terrifying no, no. to human beings. For the people floating up in the earth and the people staying on the earth, that is freaking yeah. terrifying. Yeah. I mean, could you imagine how many people be crapping their pants if they were lifted up off the earth? I mean, you, when you, if you're awake, rapture means to rise up. So that means that your vibrational understanding has risen up. So guess what? If you're watching this and you know exactly what we're talking about, you've been raptured. Yep. Absolutely. And also, like, just book of Revelation, if you think about it. So I did it. I've done months of deep diving into that book. It's always been the most intriguing book out of the whole Bible for me. And it was the most terrifying. Ob obviously not now. Now it's like the best one out of the whole, you yeah. know, 
nice Bible that we have because we know what it's about now. But um, I'm trying to think where I was going with. Oh yeah, the, the the name itself, like Revelation. I don't see in that that word right there, end of the world. No. I know a revealing of something hidden. Yeah, and if you go all the way back to Genesis, yeah, I mean, the whole Noah's Ark thing, it's pretty much playing out again, just in a different way. But also what's fascinating too is, okay, God uses the rainbow to say that we will, he will never destroy the world again. He uses that rainbow. So what they did is they inverted the rainbow, they flipped it, and they said, God is going to destroy the world. Okay, again. so what is it? Is yeah. he gonna not like hello? It contradicts it, yeah. itself. No, Revel, I agree with you. We were growing up in a southern church. I mean, you know, Jennifer, these southern churches, the evangelical oh. churches, they like scare the crap out of you. They'll scare mm -hmm. the crap out of you, but you got to be done by noon so you can get to the <laughs> restaurant for your Sunday lunch. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, and that, churches are always creepy. Another thing they do, I used to work for a large uh, department store here in Augusta. And um, I would see them with their thousand dollar suits, their four hundred dollar handbag, come over to the shoe department and drop, you know, their two hundred dollar shoes, saying, "I need to look good for the Lord." And I'm like, "You kidding me, right?" But they do it. You're the you Lord don't see what you at your worst. Like. Mm -hmm. And he was looking at her at that moment, going, "When someone actually needs help out of the church, it's funny how they don't have the money to help." Yeah, yeah, I've noticed that. But they so I'll, tell you money. I'll tell you something that when I was like 15 years old, I had this kind of like kind of come to Jesus moment, even though it was at the church where I guess I was like realizing the church I grew up with grew up in was relatively a wealthy church. Most people there were like doctors, lawyers, you know, pretty wealthy, a smaller town. And everybody that went to that church sent their kids to private schools, were members of the country club, were members of gyms. They took all these offerings and we had this great, nice church with the Sunday school classrooms. There was nothing wrong with the buildings and across the street was a parking lot. Well, they decided with this money they were taking in the church, they were going to build a whole new center and it was going to be like a bunch of rooms for whatever. And they had a gym in there, a basketball court in there. And I remember being 15 years old and you don't know much about the world when you're 15, you just know your own little world you're in. I remember thinking everybody that's at this church is also a member of a gym and a country club. Why did we build a gym and a basketball court in the church when Jesus, when my mama used to tell us to whom much is given, much is expected? Why mm. isn't this money given to the church going out to the community? At right. 15, no one in that church was hungry. No one You're in that so church was lacking. Um, and they wow. just built a whole so so now the congregation gets to wake up in the morning and decide whether they want to go to the gym or the country club's gym or the church's gym. Mm -hmm. I hate to use the word privilege because I really hate that word and what that what that word's turned into. We're all white and I, I just yeah that really pisses me off. Yeah, I but, hate just two words together. Yeah. yeah. It well, actually exist. one of our students said that at the Shala a few months back and my boyfriend went ballistic and he was like, That's just another word for white. I'll probably have to bleep this out. Yeah. And that's not, he's like, that's not going to happen in my shala. We're all equal here. We all struggle. Do not yeah. ever bring that up again. No, yeah. I, um, I hate those two words together. The white and the privilege. Cause they, yeah. it well, doesn't I don't even know what privilege looks like. Me I have no idea. So everything I've ever had, I worked for it. Ain't nothing ever been mm -hmm. handed to me. Except my for my boyfriend. Parents. I'm sorry. My parents gave me a car when I turned 16, but guess what? I had to pay him for it. Yeah. My boyfriend, um, he his family was in the military, and he'll tell you he paid his own ways to India to study and live there. When he was building his business, there were years where he would get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Or excuse me, at that time, it was like 2 o'clock in the morning where he would do his own practice. Then he would teach Mysore, which we teach early in the morning. And then he would go and work all day. He would go wait tables. He wow. would go to bed late, come get up in the morning, practice, do it all over again just to be able to build his business, to have the money to come in to build his business. At 49 years old, he's just now at a place in his life, these maybe last 10 years-ish, where he's been able to kind of relax a little bit. Yeah. And he's white. No one gave him that. Exactly. He worked for it. He worked for it. And he still works for it. You know, when you're in your business, you're constantly 
building your business. You're you can't rest on your laurels. You're constantly putting money into marketing. But I will say we're the only like yoga shala in our area that isn't allowing in. That's not allowing this. If you want to get this, that's your choice. But we're not allowing this. You're going to take that sucker off and you're going to breathe. That's just and, considered a weapon. Yeah. And I'll tell you, we're not going to allow any, you know, paperwork at all. That's never going to happen. I mean, hello, World War II. That's what the bad guys were doing. Yeah. yeah. We're never going to do that. We're not going to, we don't, that's your private business. We're not going to ask for that. And living in Atlanta, where it's technically a liberal city, we're packed. We have picked up so much business. I mean, oh, my oh, boyfriend man. said this morning, he was teaching my story. And he said, for like three hours, I didn't even, I was just sweating, helping people. Like I couldn't even, and it's because all we're in Inman park, which Jennifer probably knows the Atlanta area Inman park is very, you know, mm. out loud and proud liberal. Um, and all these other businesses, these studios are requiring paperwork and mm. this, and we're not, and we don't even talk, we don't even talk about politics. He don't even talk about, he just, he's just running his business like normal. We are busting at the seams. Yep. So that shows me. That people, most people, regardless of whether they're technically awake or not, they want to be free. Yeah, they're fed That's up. That's a natural thing. Yeah, they want to breathe. It can't last much longer. I really don't see it lasting much longer. I mean, even liberal people, at the end of the day, don't want to have to show paperwork every time they go in to take a damn yeah. yoga class. No. It's a hassle, number yeah. one. And number it's an two. It's invasion of privacy. Yeah, it's it's none of your business to ask me for that. Why would someone ask you for that? That's crazy. That that becomes not America anymore. It's division. Yeah. It against the hip a lot too. Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say that. Yeah. yeah. For yeah, men, I didn't even think of that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but to them that shit don't matter. So. They only they only use that when it's to their advantage. Yeah. yeah. They can work if it I, with ways. Those are the stated things. Working in the medical field, I would have been fired right on the spot. So yeah. how do these companies get away with that? Yeah, I don't think they will get away with it. That's the sad thing. Because yeah. Geneva well, did a reading on it. Somebody did a reading on it that some of these businesses are actually going to have to like. Yeah. yeah. And I will say, actually, tomorrow night I talked about this. You know, you think about the Nuremberg trials. Who who were the people that lost, I have to, left the earth plane mm -hmm. against their yeah. will at the Nuremberg trials? I've tried to warn so oh. many doctors and nurses and everything that I've worked for. And like, I fear for them because they're promoting this thing. Like it's been on the market for years. Yeah. And th I don't think it's, well, first of all, like the doctor I used to work with and he was a family friend. He's been my husband's doctor since he was a little kid. And he came to my house for a second. We had, we needed to have a, a little chit chat about something and I wouldn't wear a mask in front of him. And, weeks prior when it first came out and he's like well what do you think of me? i said they're bullshit and he just like looked at me like because at first i believed there was something going around you know i believe the whole hoax you know at first um but then i started to wake up and wake up more and so then i wasn't then i stopped complying so i wanted to say to him well didn't you get this Thing, why are you in fear of me not wearing one in front of you? That makes no sense. And I like I was asking him questions. Well, I said, so how does it spread? Oh, it, you know, uh, water particles. I said, okay. Well, it's cold outside. Put it on. Go outside and breathe. See what happens because it will come right out of it. Yep. So we experienced it when because we ate, ate, like questions. We, just, we put goes, the mask on. Well, Kind of program to do these things. I said exactly. You're programmed. You need to yeah. break away from that. And yet he's still promoting it. I haven't talked to any of them for a while, but I warned everyone. And yeah. all, it's yeah. all because of false evidence appearing real. Yeah. Well, that because people, I, I've I've determined too that there are certain people in this world that have narcissism or outstanding problems with their egos. They, they like to hurt other people. And so mm -hmm. they can, it's kind of like the good German. I mean, I have to yeah. be careful what I say about World War II, but remember the good German. Yep. They had, a, they had a, a, a permission to be hateful and to be mean to other people. And they got joy out of that. Yep. Um, that's what um, I was watching this talk once. And I might have to bleep some of these words out. 
uh, which again, guys, every time I do these episodes, I always, it usually airs the next day. Cause I, I scan through the whole episode to make sure that we're, we're good because it's, there's like 300 words now that you can't say on this platform. Yeah, <laughs> oh my God. No. Um, That's why but, it's so uh, hard not to. And it's like, I don't really have to worry about it because it's like, we shouldn't have to worry about it. Okay. Um, but anyway, oh yeah, this guy was on Ellis is a psychiatrist from years ago talking about, um, mental disorders as far as like narcissism or because there's all sorts of mental disorders, but we're talking about like antisocial, like narcissism, sociopathy, you know, the bad, the stuff that really affects other people in a very negative way. Mm -hmm. Um, and the narrative attracts narcissists, attracts people who are more antisocial or like psychopaths Yeah, because they have, you know, it's, it's so funny. And Janine even said this and I loved it that it's all flipped. Now, those of us who are now consider ourselves to be like on the conservative side, we're actually in actuality, we're more of like what liberals really are. It's kind of what we are. Cause we're like, whatever, you know, we, we want to, I say, I, I don't live a conservative life. Like my lifestyle is not conservative. I live with my boy living in sin. Um, you know, we run a yoga business. We travel to India. I love tarot cars, you know, the fundamentalists love to get in the comment section and, um, you know, I'll remind me of how heathenistic I am. I'm conservative because I want to conserve the constitution. Yeah. I want all people, my, my best friend is gay. Of course I support equal rights for everybody. Do I support the organization now that I can't have to figure out what I say, the alphabet people mm-hmm. right. that has now been manipulated. The ones Just like that them. other organization that has to do with a certain ethnicity mattering has been manipulated. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's all been manipulated oh, yeah. yep. to play at, of, of course we support people's lives. Of course, if you're not hurt, like the whole, this is one thing that I've noticed a lot of, uh, with the mystic books, of the Bible that a lot of like real fundamentalist Christians have a hard time with, um, that I've run up against when we look at the whole Sodom and Gomorrah thing. Now we were taught that it was, um, certain types of relationships between same sex people have to be careful that brought down Sodom and Gomorrah, not according to the missing books of the Bible. Really? Shocker. <laughs> it was things that were happening at Bohemian Grove in that little Island down oh. involving children. Gotcha. Substance. <laughs> yeah. And, and the actual like relations, adult relations, the P word. <laughs> yeah. Um, CP. But actually the action of that with I, guys, sorry, YouTube will totally not like this, but that's what was happening. It was, it had nothing to do, nothing to do with adults who were not hurting each other, who were consenting and everything to do with the children, oh God. everything to do with the children. And of course they're going to conquer and divide and they're going to take that little information out and then okay. kind of put people against each other. Yep. Yep. That's all they know how to do. That's all they know how to do. Conquer, divide, conquer, divide. Because there's more of us than there are then. So People they don't are not to for it They're not falling for it in Augusta. Good. Yeah, that's what I love about Georgia, actually. You know, here in Atlanta, you can go, like, I don't wear when I go places at all. Like, if, if a store, uh, my, my boyfriend went to the liquor store the other night, or a few weeks ago, and the one he went to, they, like, freaked out. No one was in the store. It was just the employees. He walked in without a... And they like freaked out and they made him get one of these. And he was like, okay, that's cool. I'll just go elsewhere. So he left that store. It was dead. There was no, there was no customers. He went down the street to the other one, another store. No one there had this on. It was packed. (laughs) That's just a beautiful thing to see, isn't it? Oh my God. There's a nail salon (laughs) here that I go to sometimes. It's over here at Ansley Park. They're all Mr. T supporters. Nice. And it is, I feel like it's, um, it's like, um, during prohibition with the, uh, what were they called? The, um, oh, mine's going blank. Speakeasies. Speakeasies. Yes. Um. I went in there the other day and it was packed and <laughs> nobody had this on. Everyone was laughing. It was, you know, people of all races, of all sexualities, men, women, like everybody in there laughing, cutting up with each other. I was like, I'm, yeah, I was like, I've walked into a damn speakeasy. This is awesome. <laughs> Mm-hmm. This is awesome. Like, Believe it or not, it, most people are not wearing them anymore. You would think they would. We're in a. This is a liberal state. I mean, I'm the only Mr. T supporter out of my entire family. 
Wow. Oh, wow. So, I mean, that's how brutal it is. But there's not a lot of people wearing them. Only in, like, probably the more inner cities, they're wearing them. But, like, around here, I'm kind of in the country area, and most people are not buying it anymore. And it's so funny because this is something that's waking my husband up because you get, like, these um, local news stations, and they're, they're posting all the, the, the numbers that are in the hospital, right? And uh, you should see the comments below. And, my, you know, he's like, oh, they're getting ripped to shreds. No one's buying this bogus. Yeah. That's what he does believe me with. I think it's more of the party substance, satanic kind of stuff that it, he's not awake to. But when it comes to that, he is. Um, but it's just amazing how many people are waking up and I mean, not one person on the comment section is saying, oh, my gosh, are you serious? Like, that's awful. They're all like, enough with the propaganda. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's like the White House. They had to, like, disable the comments and take off the like ratio button because they were getting, like, I was small. wondering no more comment yeah. section. <laughs> the most popular president ever, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I got to – this is sort of off the subject of what we've been talking about, but it's really – so – Okay, Bryce, I know you have niece and nephews. Um, Jen, I don't know if you have any around any kids or anything, but Seth, I, I know you, ha you have your son. Remember the show Blue's Clues? Yeah. yeah. Remember Steve back in the 90s, the original one? I couldn't stand him. <laughs> well, you remember he died of right? Overdose. Yes. I, yes I no, he's alive. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah, Mand Mand Mandela Was effect, maybe? All these people to come out and or maybe he like, knew what was my on. day because you had mentioned freddie mercury a couple weeks ago so i'm mm -hmm. a huge queen fan my husband got me into queen and like i i sing so like oh my god i just need to sing with him one day because that would just what i understand true. from this was coming from oh we lost jennifer there um, what, 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 what this is, what I understand is this was coming from, uh, maybe I think negative 48 told us this. I can't remember if it was on a show or if we were just on a zoom afterwards, but apparently he is going to part of his job from what I understand is to explain to the, to the alphabet people what happened mm -hmm. and what they did to their organization. That whole community. And it's so sad. Yeah. Cause my, my best friend is, is gay and he never goes to any of the stuff, you know, he always says, like, you know, he wants to be known for his talents. Mm -hmm. be known for who he is, not because yeah. of his sexual exactly. orientation. Just like straight people. Like, I don't, we don't walk around being known because. Yeah, we, yeah, we don't. We don't have, who cares? Yeah, who cares? I don't have to explain. Honestly, who cares? It, it, yeah. I think the main thing is, is especially with men, I think that if they sympathize with someone that likes the same sex, that that might make them some kind of weird person or something i think it's like a macho a thing macho, yeah yeah like no, they, I... in the bravado or something and it's just stupid but i think i you think know, and I, I think busy. a lot of men nowadays like like you like my boyfriend are starting to like i mean my boyfriend loves my best friend he i i call uh, i get i take pictures with both both of them like we're in a polygamous relationship and i've got you know, <laughs> I'm like, it's my husband and my husband. Um, so, you know, um, you know, so yeah, I think, I think a lot of, I think that's part of the new, the great awakening. That's all that, 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 that conquer and divide, you know, yeah. that men can be best friends with other men who like men and not be weird. Yeah. That would not be like, it's just two friends. It doesn't matter yeah. what your it's sexual preference is. It doesn't matter. It's you, you like the person. Um, I, my best friend is an incredible, he understands, he's, he lives up in uh, Canada. I haven't seen him in a while because we haven't been able to, to, he used to come down here like once a month to visit. Um, but he is an incredible, he understands the human body very well. Like he's, he is such an incredible movement teacher. And he got me, I had broken my sacrum a little while ago. And he had gotten me into doing like bar classes to help with my yoga practice because of the way they move. And it, it's really saved me. And he just under he does Reiki as well. And he just understands. So he understands the spiritual as well as just the basic anatomy and where things work and what's going to help one area. He just, he's just genius. Like everything he recommends me do, it helps. And when he works on your body, it, 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 he's just so good at that. He just understands it. And I'm like, this is what he should be known for. 
Yeah. This is what, you know, and he'll, he'll go, he'll fly to Quebec to study with the Cirque du Soleil people to see how they teach different movement, like handstands. Oh, that's awesome. You know, like he works so hard at his craft and he loves it. Yeah. He loves it. When we were in India together, that's how I met him. <laughs> yoga, he'll go and take like extra courses outside of the school to like understand Reiki better, understand like different forms of massage that we don't offer here in the West, just so he has a better under a more educated view of the human anatomy, right. you know, and he's funny too. He's one of the funniest people. He is one of these people that when you're in a really stressful situation, he'll crack a joke and like it relaxes everyone. You know, I'm like, this is, this is, this is who this person is. It doesn't matter that he's gay. And yeah. he, he's just you know, got a good he soul. Wants, yeah. He wants to marry someone in Atlanta so he can move here and be a real housewife of Atlanta with me, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, get it, get his green card. But, um, but you know, it's, it's, um, that's not, that's not the identity of who he is. It's not what he's, yeah. he doesn't, I don't spend my whole day thinking about like sexual relations with my boyfriend. No. Most of my day, that's a very small part of your actual yeah. life, you know, my boyfriend, I, as you know, your partner's like also your best friend too. So you do other things together besides just that. But I also spend my day as you guys do researching. Mm -hmm. He's, we're, he's out there painting right now because he's a, my boyfriend's an artist as well, but you know, he's working on his, you know, and that's, that's the um, LBGTQ. They should be able to just be human beings. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Be labeled. It. that's the problem with labels it's you yeah. shouldn't label anyone democrat republican right. any of it none of it no right. label black white that's I, i'm a human there's one yeah. race yeah. There's yeah one race it's my friend race. who one of my good friends who is a high school chemistry teacher she says that all the time there's no such thing as race no, no. there's no such yeah. thing you as have race. pigment in your no skin race. i don't who cares yeah you well, know, let's go toss that and get on to being friends let's go party let's go have yeah. some fun let's uh, who white cares too. We, we go on the beach and we go tanning. Why? Because we want our skin dark. I know, yeah. right? Yeah, I, know. Right? Well, I mean, yeah. reality, God is, God is, God and God's infinite wisdom. Like he creates us. I mean, I know like my eyes are blue. So I know that people who have blue eyes are less likely to struggle with snow blindness. Well, that's amazing because most people who are blue eyed come from places where genetically there's where snow. there's a lot of snow. Yeah. Holy cow. I never thought of that. Right, people who have more melanin in their skin, it's because they live in places where, guess what? They need it to protect themselves. Yeah. You know, sense. so it, it is, it's literally just these things. It's like, it's like, you know, you have certain cars that are good for the mountains and certain cars that are good for the cities. It's just where, but they're just cars. It's, it's yep. where you, you, you can adapt to, to your nature. You know, it's, it's that adapting to nature. That's so, a really good way to look at it. It makes a yeah. lot of sense. That's all it is. So yep. and we and we you're right because I'm I'm always like well out here in the south you can just sit outside for like five minutes in the summertime and you're sweating so bad and you're pink and red and <laughs> that's why we were I want to move down south but I don't know that she could take it like I my ideal place would be Hilton Head South Carolina but I think weather's drastically going to change yeah too. I think I do think that the south will stay pretty muggy. Just because that's, it's always, even before modern technology, it was pretty muggy down here. I always wonder that about my ancestors. I mean, I, and Georgia was a prisoner state before, and then we had the revolution mm -hmm. and that, that became Australia. Um, okay. But like, so a lot of people that ended up in Georgia that has answer, it's because they were brought here against their will too. But like my ancestors in South Carolina, are like my dad's mom came up through New Orleans. I'm like, they were coming from Northern Europe and they came here in those petticoats. Those are some <laughs> badass bitches. Yeah, they were. To be able to hang out in those petticoats in this freaking heat with no air conditioning. Because I get, you know, it gets, you know, you get that swamp ass, like what you call it, swamp ass, where you're, yep. you're, you're like ass, sweating all, all sorts long, of areas. And, you have to own, when you go buy underwear down south, you go and buy like four or five pairs at a time. Four yeah. or five packs at a time. <laughs> when I first, so when I first moved to England many years ago um, in London, I was living with a bunch of girls from England and I noticed that I would take like two showers a day and then they wouldn't. And I was like, this is interesting. Why am I always taking all these showers? And they're not. And then I realized it's because when you grew up in Georgia, 
You constantly have to wa- have to wash the freaking sweat off of you. Yep. Or you're gonna walk around smelling. Or your mom, like my mother would sometimes hose us off in the garage. Like you know, you can't. <laughs> yeah, you're con- and you just you're hot, so you just want to yep. you feel gross. Yep. So it's like Christy is one of those things I will say, and Jennifer, you can probably relate to this. Like in the summertime, when I have to blow dry my hair, it is oh literally. My- like I, it is like I, in the summer, if we have to go somewhere fancy where I have to like actually look fancy I and it's summertime in Georgia, I have to give myself like at least a couple of hours oh, because wow. I'll take a shower and then I'll have to sit in front of the air conditioning, like the unit just sit there. <laughs> yeah. naked. I do. I'm like, oh. She does, yeah. but naked. So, right in front of it. I walk in and go, oh, hey. How did you do <laughs> <laughs> And go stand up in the air conditioning for a little while. <laughs> Pretty sad. I do that up here in Connecticut. But <laughs> our, up here too. our summers lately, probably for the past 10 years, have been horrible. It's just constantly humid. Although the last couple weeks have been nice, but very, very humid. And then there was one fall even. Um, I think it was like four or five years ago. It was humid all the way up until Christmas. I'm like, what mm-hmm. the hell is going on? All right, Jennifer, do you remember? I remember having su- uh, Christmases here as a kid in shorts. No, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Being in shorts. Yeah. yeah. Pennsylvania. We don't, I mean, I always wanted to live somewhere as a kid. I, you always want to be different. I, I had this fantasy as a kid that I was going to live somewhere that got snow. Mm-hmm. We never get snow. It's like, it's like if, if they whisper that there might be, Small chance we're going to get flurries. The Piggly Wiggly will sh- sell out of bread and water. Oh, yep. Piggly no. Wiggly. Oh, I love the... Oh, God. <laughs> go down south, dude. Piggly You're Wiggly. Sneaky, man. We get plenty uh, of that here, but it's not the nice kind. It's the slushy kind, usually. We yeah. don't know how to handle it. If it snows here, they close us down. We don't have the <laughs> yeah. equipment. And, and I understand. They're not going to use tax the, the state taxes. They're not going to use that money to buy road stuff for a state that doesn't really ever get snow no. until the snow days in Good i mean it's exciting as a kid because if they even mention it might snow and even if it just flurries just a little bit even if it doesn't if it even it hits <laughs> it doesn't it just melts right away they still, <laughs> they still call school off because That's hilarious <laughs> i just think it's funny yeah well, my, kids my, here, there's like a Eight, eight inches of snow and their kids are going to school yeah, no, that, would happen, yeah no, that would not happen here in georgia would it jennifer <laughs> Hey, they, 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 would, people would be out of, there like thinking the apocalypse. Well, we know the apocalypse is happening, happening, but that literally would be thinking like this is yeah, the whole thing. What um, they think the apocalypse is. Grace, there's yeah. been many times I walked out and I'm like, why does these kids even have school? Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. It's not even safe to take these kids out. Why? And us as parents, we're the first to think of it because it's dangerous. I don't yeah. want to put my kid on a school bus in the hands of someone else's yeah. life. That's just not how I roll. Yeah. You know, my friend, my best friend from Canada once, I was talking to him on the phone while um, he was going to get his, uh, he was like, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm just getting my winter tires for my car. I was like, you're what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was like, red. winter tires. And I was like, huh? What? Yeah. I was like, you, you get different tires in the winter? He was like, what, you don't? I was like, no. What? Oh, you should, what? You should see us out here. We have like a little hill to come up before we can park in our, where our cars is. And they don't even plow this because it is technically part of the borough. They don't plow it like they should. Mm-hmm. And we'll, we'll have to park our cars right in the middle of it because we can't get up it. You just aim and go as yeah. far as you can. And it, boom, see, my car is, my car is like a, I got a little lower ricer car, I guess they call them. And um, it's lowered to the ground. It, you go as far up the hill as you can. Tilt the wheel so you're sideways. So if it slides, it slides this way and not down the hill. And then get out and walk up the rest of the way. I got to say this. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm really sorry. But I hate snow. Me too. I mm-hmm. yeah, always wanted to live somewhere where there was snow. Because we know we know for sure down here in Georgia that we're going to have a hot summer. But you never know what the winter is going to be like. You know, yeah. for us. And my, my friend from Canada, he would come down sometimes in the winter. And I'd be freezing. Bundled up. And he'd be in a tank top and shorts. Because it was nice <laughs> for him. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I always say, so when we go to India, I always laugh because, um, when we're in the big shala in India and you have all the people from all over the world that are in that shala and you watch, there's only the, as far as like the white people that are there, the people from uh, like, like Europe or America, 
there's like five of us three no more there's like three for three of us from atlanta and there's like maybe five down in miami florida we're the only damn white people in that shawl that could take that heat you start mm-hmm. seeing those people from copenhagen and that heat hits them and they're practicing and they start like sweating <laughs> and the people from georgia and florida are like oh this is fine this is normal why are you get, you know we would just watch them get all flushed face and they're like having this like and the elements from florida and georgia are like this is just a nor- this is normal like this is this is fine <laughs> you know much. it's what we live with in georgia so <laughs> um, yeah that's it, when i hear you guys say that you like snow you want it you want snow and i'm, I'm like, like mm-hmm. here i'll give it to you you can have all you'll come snow. to hilton head you won't have a lot of snow in hilton head i know but the heat i'd rather be cold well if you could snow. do like the uh, snowbirds do like in florida you got snowbirds where my um my, my, my boyfriend's family lives where they get in the six months of the year they have people from like new england that come down to florida so you could get it to in the whole new nasari you could have like your winter house in hilton head i like that idea well listen that's we kind of what i'm thinking too we actually said that um i want to live by the beach mm-hmm. he wants a like a cabin wooden ca- or a log cabin out in the like boonies where, by Nobody like a lake else around and stuff so we'll have like the cityish life and then we'll have like the countryest life See, yeah. I lived in the yeah. city most of my life. I lived in Montgomery County, Maryland, which is, I mean, I call it the melting pot because I, growing up the way I grew up, I can't see how anyone's racist because where I came from, I was pretty much the minority. Yeah. And it, it never dawned on me that I was the minority because I wasn't taught that way. You know yeah. what I mean? Just a human but, being. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, I don't know. Well, I too, like Tamar and I have talked about this. Like we don't even under, I mean, I think the gravity of what we don't know is greater than what we actually know at this point. And we, we talked about this with, I think Toronto, to, uh, Tamar, Toronto and I did that. How do we even know that the locations we think are far away are that far away? Like, how do yeah. we even know Australia is that? And I've been to oh. Australia. It's a long flight. How do we know that it's actually that far away? Are they just not duping us? you know, and it's actually, they're just an hour away. So with that being said, we know travel is going to change for us once it's not going to be like it is now. So, you know, it's going to be, so it's going to be fun, but y'all we've been on for like almost two hours now episode for everybody to watch. And I'm going to try to keep this up on YouTube. Um, I'll just, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan through this. I'm going to, we, for those watching, we're recording this on Monday afternoon. This will probably be up on Tuesday. I know people like to rip our work, work off and put it on their channels, which is fine in my opinion, because at least yeah. the message is getting out yeah, there. Stop yeah. the message, get it yeah. out. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not super, but I know people get annoyed because they don't know what's new or what's not. So we are filming this. What's today's date? The 20th, the September 20th. 20th. Mm-hmm. I think it's like three o'clock Eastern Standard Time, yeah. which mm-hmm. we're all Eastern Standard Time. So mm-hmm. hopefully I'll, I'm going to, Pull this down uh, after we're done. I'm going to pull it off and I'm going to scan through it, watch it through and mute words that are on the list. And I'll put the text up on the screen and then I'll send you guys the copy. So you already have all the words muted. So you don't have to worry about, worry about that. Um, and we'll get this up for you guys. And I'm, y'all, so everybody watching, I, I forget we're recording sometimes. It just feels like we're chatting. Yeah. Friends, so, <laughs> so also we're going to like start picking our noses and like <laughs> <laughs> forgetting that we're actually, oh my God, y'all, we were watching this, these funny videos before we go last night, my boyfriend were laying in bed watching these funny videos that happened just kind of like America's funny some videos, but like on Instagram. And you know how people have these like, doorbells with cameras and sound where you can talk to the person outside well this girl had brought her boyfriend home to meet her parents for the first time and he had a little bit of gas and so he stepped outside so he could have his gas and no one would know and it was embarrassing (laughs) <laughs> I'm just letting it rip so that's like that's us really. us like in our zoom sometimes like we forget we're recording and we're just chit chatting so really. <laughs> glad nobody farted here i know right it's just like just I didn't know if it ever it. happens no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> i would have muted if it happened i would have like cut it out don't worry yeah. i would have actually I would have cut that out. So, <laughs> so, but that's what I think that's what's so cool about our side of this battle is that we're all really cool people and we like to laugh and we like to be, you know, we're, this is, as I was telling you guys, new to the, new to the platform, like everybody that has a channel, 
they're all super cool. What you oh, see yeah. on channel is what you see off channel as well. So they're all super cool. Nobody's got <laughs> big egos. They're all very just cool and funny. And all right, guys. So again, for everybody watching, please, please, please go down and to subscribe, excuse me, subscribe <laughs> to Christy's channel, Jennifer's channel and Stephanie's channel. So you can spread the wealth of information around and we can all continue to support each other as we walk into this new world as one of my favorite, favorite, favorite teachers, yoga teachers, Ram Dass said one of his most famous quotes was we are all just walking each other home. We're all just walking each other home. And that's the difference between our side of this battle and their side of this battle. We're all walking hand in hand together into that new, new tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then what a wonderful world that's going to be. So it's, thank you so much. Price. Of course. And I'll talk thank to you. Janine. I'll see if we can schedule something yeah. soon with Janine. Um, and get you guys on. That's, that's amazing. So all right, I'll talk to everybody later. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.